Okay, in this video we, we are going to discuss how to take this SolidWorks part and print it out in a 3D printer, the Ultimaker Cura. That's the one we're using. So this is the where we left off. That's the assembly with the breadboard in it. However, I am going to go back to the part. And this is our part, just uh, one solid uh, part in here. But I'm going to save it now. So I'm going to say Save As. And click the first one. Instead of a SOLIDWORKS part, I'm going to take this and save it as an STL part. Uh, STL stands for Stereolithography, and that is what is actually partitioned into layers in the 3D printer. So I'm going to select STL, and I'm going to say Save. Okay, It's going to pretty much break this guy up into features that the Ultimaker recognizes, and it's asking us if we are happy with it, and I don't think we have a choice. I'm going to say yes. Okay, so once this is done, we can go now and click on the all time Mercury Q. Uh, that's uh, Camtasia, that's the recording one. The red one right here. Uh, nope. This is the one right there, all time Mercury Cura. So you click on that and uh, you open it. This uh, is the how the program looks like. So the 3D printers that we have in Mac Hall are in room 131 and 136. 131 has the 2 plus uh, a, a versions and 136 the newer ones, the 3. The difference mostly is that uh, whatever file you uh, have you can enter a USB stick in there, memory drive, uh, in the um, in the 3. In the 2 plus you need an SD card, okay? So your file needs to be placed in an SD card which is the one that is in 131. So uh, the first thing we want to see here is um, we want to be able to uh, go to settings, okay, and make sure that under printer you select the one that you will be using, okay. So by the way, this All Time Mercury Cura it's a free program that you can download from the web, and you just kind of Google this, and once you have it, uh, you can change your under settings the type of printer. Okay, we can add a printer, and there's a list that shows um, the different types. We have the 3 in 136 and the Ultimaker 2, right? So in this case, I have that one, so I select that one and I, I say add. Okay, I actually had two of those already. Um, so after we have this, um, I'm just simply going to, if you right click by the way with your mouse you can move things around. If you uh, hit on your scrolling button you sort of pan things and you can zoom in and out uh, with your scrolling button. So I'm going to go ahead and open the part. I'm going to say open and we go to, um, let's see, Megatronics. I'm going to go week 3 and this is the the fixture and that's our stereolithography file for Cura. So I want to say open and that brings the file like so kind of uh, crazy looking so it just stood the part in there. Um, what we need to do now is just click on the part and as soon as I click it I can move the part around um, and on the left there is also an option to rotate the part. Now I want to make sure that I place a part in such a way that I am um, it's it's going to be printed um, in uh, as nice as possible. So I'll show you what I mean. These circles, you can grab the arrow and move them around. So let's say if I move this minus 90 degrees, it'll just um, place my, my part like so. And from underneath, I can see if I see any reddish um, a, colors that means that surface it is parallel to the build surface which is on the top okay um, I can also go back to uh, motion in uh, X and Y and Z okay so let's pretend that's how I think I want my my build to happen um, on the right side here we have several options that we need to uh, set for example um, one is the type of filament that is going to be used in terms of um, of the thickness 
and 0.1 means that well the thing is going to be in, as as the build is is occurring and maybe I need to show this I'm going to slice this first here on the lower right and that is going to somehow tell me how long it's going to take for this to print and if I click on preview yeah I it'll show me how the print printing happens so I want you to notice how um let me see if I can put it this way if there's a bar that shows up here on the right side and that bar shows you the printing process so it begins uh, down there and little by little it starts you know doing a, a pass of, of the a, of the extrusion um, in this case we're using PLA that's the material so this keeps printing printing and printing okay and I can zoom in a little bit and eventually da -da 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 -da, it does um, one side there which is hanging in the air and that's that won't work it goes all the way up and eventually it prints completely and that takes nine hours and 23 minutes however uh, this is bound to collapse because um, as you may notice as soon as um, this goes to this point you just can't possibly start printing in thin air so this whole thing is going to collapse which means we need some type of support but essentially that's how these uh, 3D printers work uh, it imaging uh, in 2D one layer at a time now if we go back here and these settings they tend to change all the time um, I'm just clicking on the very first uh, profile option here I'm going to choose normal so normal is a thicker uh, pass of the extrusion it's 0.15 millimeters so if I slice this again I should get a, a shorter amount of time so we went from 9 hours to 4 hours and much better however I still need to change some components in here uh, if we go to quality um, I suppose that's where we were in let's go to shell oops um, shell talks about uh, some some of these are by default as soon as we go down under the normal option um, let me click here for a second I suppose I gotta go down here uh, infill infill in terms of percentage so infill is the material that's actually as the word implies right in there so the less the more hollow it is okay and if I increase the infill to say um, I don't know, I'm going to say 40% and then I, I slice this again so I want you to um, notice how my time kind of increased but the infill now it's stronger it's a little more robust the material there okay and you also have the ability to not only say how much infill you want but also the type of pattern you can select triangles in there um, you can go to uh, this gyroid material let's see how long it takes if I slice it okay and that makes it a little more a little stronger depending on the application so that's another type of infill and I can say yeah 40 percent is not gonna do it maybe 60 and then you slice it again and that gives it strength which for the light following mechanism is not um, we don't you know we'll, we won't be placing any load in this so it won't be problematic at all we can stick with 20 percent infill and slice it again okay so we slice that again and uh, even forget about the gyro guy let's go with lines and that should be fine okay so now it takes four hours 20 minutes all right then uh, we moving on with the options we can choose material and under material all right if this wants to open okay so this is apparently new we usually use PLA um, in the printers that's a type of, uh, of, of thermoplastic and it apparently you have some properties here I know that we set the temperature of the extrusion as well and uh, well oh there it is so under print settings you have 200 degrees and that is fine the build plate even this plate gets a little warm 
so that as soon as the plastic is placed on it, it doesn't start warping. It just keeps it there for a little bit, so 60 degrees. And that seems to be fine, so I'm going to say OK. And then you have uh, also speed. How fast do you want this to bzz, 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 go up and down? Um, that's by default, that is fine. Um, supports, this is very important. So when you go to support, you want to make sure that you generate a support. And the reason is, that's probably going to increase my, my time for printing, but this um, these arms are not going to be in the air. So if I slice this, before we were at 4 hours and 20 some minutes, now we're at 6 hours. And what that did was, now as, as it is printing from scratch, you can see that we have these columns in there and uh, they are meant to support this horizontal beam without them it's just not going to work okay the same happens when we get closer to let me move this around like so um, to this part where the breadboard is located you see so you have these columns also which should be supporting uh, the um, Hmm. All right. Let's try to try to move here. Okay, which should be supporting the holes that we built. It's getting a little nauseous here, but uh, there they are. Okay, so we had some holes in there. This is the 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 first one, and without the support, it's very difficult to do that. So a little two more hours to go because of that. Um. And then uh, in the end, we have build uh, plate adhesion. Now we expand that. It talks about the different options we have uh, when we first start, when the printer first starts uh, printing. Uh, for example, skirt, if you ch choose skirt, um, that means that at first we're going to slice this. It simply uh, creates sort of um, that little line outside. Uh, and that is to give you an idea, this little line right there, of the size of your print in case you sort of change your mind before it starts printing. Um, typical one used, uh, you can use a brim and you slice it again. And with a brim, um, you can see that the support is a little more robust in the beginning. So I'm going to lower the, the scale. And and this is just better so the part is not moving around when you start. And uh, I think raft is a little stronger. Let's see if it's true. Yep. And if, so if I lower this print, this is how the base begins. Okay. So different options that we can play with. I suggest maybe we'll stick with brim because. Um, once this starts building, the first couple of minutes is essential that we don't leave um, because if things go crazy here, it'll be like spaghetti. It's a PLA all over the place. It's very easy for the plastic to detach from the build plate. And obviously, you want to make sure that this fo foundation is pretty strong um, before the whole build continues. So once we have all these options, we simply we can save it to file, right? So let's say we're happy. Um, going back to the the all time maker, this is the two plus. So you do need an SD card. Um, if you're using the three, you use a USB. You in your laptops, you can put a USB in there. Save it to file, and the um, extension is now G code dot G code. That is what the printer is going to understand once you you put it in there. So I can just simply save it like that. I'm going to say save. And it's ready to go. If I had uh, inserted a pen drive or an SD card into my laptop, this immediately recognizes that it's just going to save it to that external uh, memory uh, stick. And uh, once that is done, it's a simple matter of going to the printer, inserting it on the side in 136. And there's a little knob in the front that that allows you to choose options. What is the drawing you want to create? Just push it, get to that, and it starts warming up. After that, your build begins. It, takes, it counts down, tells you how much time is left. And when it's over, it just cools down a little, and you just kind of have to uh, 
take this off, but it just, sometimes it's a little strong because rem remember this uh, fond foundation is stuck in the in the glass uh, plate. So you got to pull it carefully and then uh, slowly re uh, remove all these uh, supporting material, and that is um, sometimes problematic. You got to have uh, some pliers in there to remove this well. So it's not as clean as you might think the first time around when you're printing these things, um, which is why the options come in handy on uh, on the quality of the print. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it for the old time maker. If if you have more than one part that you want to uh, include in there, you can. So for example, let's say I wanted to do two of these. You can you can absolutely uh, place it in there. And you do this by opening uh, another, the same file. So I'm going to grab the same thing and I'm going to drop it like so. All right. And okay, so we have two. Let's see what happens here. And that takes now uh, forever 17 hours. And check it out. This is crazy. So <laughs> it really uh, it's worth your time to play around with how am I going to uh, print this out? Okay, goes to show you it's just too much time uh, printing support material. And that's the old time maker. Hopefully um, you can print the uh, support or rather the attachment for the light following mechanism, and then uh, plug and play with a breadboard. Okay. Thank you.